Good day 2P and welcome to your next topic and in fact your last topic of this unit on factoring. Our goal today I can factor a simple trinomial that has a common factor by first taking out the common factor. So we're going to take a look today at factoring simple trinomials when there's a common factor involved. So yesterday or the last time that we had a lesson we learned to factor something like this x squared minus 20x uh, plus 36. Now if you remember what we did, we said, well I know it came from two sets of brackets, so I put down my two sets of brackets. And in order for there to be an x squared at the front, I had to have an x times an x at the front of each of these brackets. In order to get 36 at the back, my two numbers here had to multiply to 36, and then I just sort of read this thing backwards. I know that the signs have to be the same, and they have to be minus, because this plus sign here, anything that's plus tells us the signs are going to be the same, and then this tells us what the signs actually are. So the two signs have to be subtract and subtract. And now I'm just going to read that backwards, and by reading it backwards, this is what I mean. Um, I always have to multiply to the last term. And then after I know I have to multiply to the last term, then I just read this, then I have to add to 20. So the two numbers I'm looking for multiply to 36 and add to 20. So our choices are 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, but I don't think I need to go any further because 2 and 18 add to 20. So I can put the 2 in here and the 18 in here. So hopefully you remember doing that from our last lesson. Now sometimes a simple trinomial can look complex and by complex I mean there's a number in front of this x squared and when there's a number in front of that x squared it generally complicates things. Now in our curriculum we don't have to worry too much about when there's a number in front of the x squared. Most of the time we can factor it out and if you take a look all of these things will divide by 4. So we need to take it out, and once you've taken the common factor out, you can factor the part in the bracket as you would normally factor a simple trinomial. So I'm going to factor out that 4, and I get x squared plus 2x minus 24. And now that I've factored out that 4, I can leave the 4 in the front, and I have to leave the 4 in the front because it was part of the original expression, but now I can ignore it. I'm just going to put down my two sets of brackets, and I'm going to look at what's left in the brackets. In order to get the x squared here, I know I need an x and an x at the front of the brackets. The two numbers I'm looking for multiply to 24, and this here tells me the signs have to be different. The only way I can get a negative number here is if the two signs were different. So I'm going to put a plus in one and a minus in the other. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 24 and subtract to 2. So two numbers that multiply to 24 and subtract to 2. What are my choices? I got 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, or 4 and 6. Those all multiply to 24, and the ones that subtract to 2 is the 4 and the 6. And I know that I need to have more positives, because when those two, remember positives and negatives cancel each other out, and in order for me to have positives in this middle, once the inside and the outside terms combined, I must have had more positives, so I need to put the 6 here, and the 4 here. Now that's pretty much the same as what we were doing yesterday. The only difference here is I took out this 4 first. So I'm going to do a few more of these. I'm going to talk through, uh, through them. And if you think you've got it, you maybe want to pause the video and actually try them yourself. And then listen to me talk them through and see if you did them correctly. So we're going to look at this one here first. Um, it looks complex because I've got this 4 in front of the x squared, but if you take a look, 4 can come out of all of those things. So I'm going to put the 4 at the front, and when I take 4 out, I'm going to be left with x squared, 
when I divide this term by 4. When I divide this term by 4, I get minus 5x. And when I divide this term by 4, I get minus uh, 16. Oh, sorry, not 16, 14. Uh, where's my eraser? Minus 14. So leaving that 4 out front, I put down my two sets of brackets, and I need an x at the front of each. And I'm looking for two numbers that, since the signs are different, I've got 1 plus and 1 minus, this tells me the signs are different. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 14 and subtract to 5. And that's going to be 7 and 2. And again, this tells me what I have more of. So I have more negatives, so I put the 7, the bigger number with the negative, and a 2 there. And I'm done. Okay, going down to this one. This one looks almost like a simple trinomial except for that negative out front and I can actually take the negative out. Remember it's kind of like a negative 1. If I divide a negative 1 out then I'm going to get x squared plus 3x minus 28. And so now I just leave that negative 1 out front. You don't even have to have negative 1, you can just put a negative. And put down my two sets of brackets. x is at the front. This sign here is negative, that tells me my two signs are different, so I need 1 plus and 1 minus. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 28 and subtract to 3. So they multiply to 28 and subtract to 3. Uh, that must be 7 and 4. And again, I need more positives, so I put the 7 with my positive and the 4 with my negative. Going up here, I'm going to take that negative 2 out. When I take the negative 2 out, I'm left with x squared plus 11x. Remember, taking the negative out changes the signs, and then plus 20. No, sorry, 30. Plus 30. So, now leave that negative 2 out front, put two sets of brackets, and now I'm going to factor this thing up here. So I know I need x's at the front. This tells me the signs are the same, and when I look over here, it tells me they're both positive. So I'm going to put them in. Positive and positive. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 30 and add to 11. So they multiply to 30 and add to to 11. That's got to be 6 and 5. This one down here. Now this one's kind of an odd looking one because I got X's and I got P's, but if you have a look, they all have an X and a P in it, so I can take X and P out as common factors. So if I take an X out of here, I have two X's left, or X squared, and then the P's gone. Minus, if I take an X and a P out of there, I have 12 uh, taking one x away, so there's one x left, and I took the p away. And then plus 32, the xp is gone, because I divided it out. So remember, what I did was I divided everything by xp when I took that out as a common factor to get what's left in the brackets. And now I leave that xp out front, put down my two sets of brackets, and I know I need an x here and an x here, I know the signs are the same, and they're both negative. Signs are the same, and they're both negative, so I put two negatives in there. Now we're multiplying to 32 and adding to 12. Well, what multiplies to 32? There's 1 and 32. 2 and 16. 3 doesn't go. 4 and 8. 8, and I think I got it, 4 times, 4 plus 8 is 12, and 4 times 8 is 32, so I need a 4 here and an 8 here. Almost done here. Two more to go. I'm going to take a 5 out, and I'm going to take a P out. If you notice, they all have a P in there, so I'm going to take 5P out. If I take 5P out of here, 
Remember what I'm doing is dividing each of these things by 5p. So I'm going to divide them all by 5p to get what goes in this bracket. So I'm left with p squared because I divided two, one of those away. And so I'm left with 2 and then the 5's cancel so I'm just left with the p squared. And then 80 divided by 5, I'm going to get minus um, 14. And actually, sorry, once again, that's not 14. you got to watch your multiplication here. It screws everything up. Uh, even I have trouble sometimes. This is a 16. 80 divided by 5 is 16. And I have one P left because I divided one of those P's away. And over here, 315 divided by 5. Three fifteen divided by five is sixty three, so I get plus sixty three on the end. Now leave that five p. Put down your two sets of brackets. P's go at the front in order to give me a p squared. This tells me the signs are the same. This tells me they're both negative, so I'm going to put the two negatives down. So I need to multiply to sixty three, and add. 216. So what multiplies to 63 and adds to 16? That's going to be 9 times 7. And lastly, this one looks kind of odd because uh, I've got tons of k's here, but if you notice that they all have at least two k's, so I can take out a k squared. And if I take out a k squared, I have a k squared minus a 2k and don't forget, this is plus 1, because k squared divided by k squared. Anything divided by itself is 1. And now this becomes really quite simple. Put down my two brackets. I have k's at the beginning. <clears throat> the signs are the same, because that's positive, and this tells me they're both negative. So, we'll put them down. And the only way you can multiply to 1 is 1 and 1. So, there's my answer. And we're done for today. And in fact, done for this unit.